Hey there everyone, Neve here, and uh, this is Neve Learns, and this is another part of my trying to solve a 100 year old family mystery, and this is part 6. It's uh, going to be kind of a shorter video, uh, not super long, um, not a lot of updates, but just some, uh, some DNA updates and um, some uh, updates on family tree DNA and all of that. <laughs> so, first I want to apologize for it being like five or six months since my last uh, part of this. Um, lots of reasons for that. One, just, uh, you know, there wasn't a lot to report and other reasons were, uh, you know, going on a family vacation and then having a family emergency and just, you know, household colds, all of that. Anyway, so I am back um, and there actually has been a lot of development, uh, most of which we're not going to cover in this uh, video, uh, simply because a lot of what has recently come up uh, came up after I made this slide and everything, so uh, made this presentation. So um, yeah, but so um, I just want to recap uh, what we've done in the past here. Now, this is um, the recap of I1Z140. And if you've watched my previous videos, which I'll leave a card pop up to, um, my dad tested at 23andMe, and initially it gave him the haplogroup, the Y haplogroup of IM253, uh, which is a Scandinavian haplogroup. And if you remember from our previous videos, um, we were, I was, we suspected that my uh, great-grandfather's birth father might have been of Swedish descent because of the name Helmer that uh, the birth mother insisted the child have, even though she has no uh, Swedish on her side and, you know, really this was kind of a guess. It was really the only clue we had, so we were going with this clue that possibly maybe the birth father of uh, Vernon that's my great-grandfather was of Swedish descent so one clue that would help us would be what the Y haplogroup was and since this is a direct male line um, the Y haplogroup would determine you know the Y haplogroup of the uh, our missing ancestor so um, my dad tested as IM253, which is a Scandinavian haplogroup, so that lended uh, more credence to our possible theory that the birth father was Swedish. Um, but, you know, that's it's a huge, you know, there's so many uh, subgroups that fit under IM253, and it's, you know, it's really prevalent in the United Kingdom as well, and also in other parts of uh, Western Europe, so it you know it's certainly not conclusive, but it was just a, another nugget of evidence. Now I was able to figure out that I was able to narrow down my dad's haplogroup to I1Z140, which is um, a subgroup of IM253. And how I figured that out was I looked through the raw DNA file uh, that uh, 23andMe provided us. And, um, and the SNPs associated with Z1, uh, Z140, uh, I found those, and he was positive for Z140, so we knew that he was on that branch. And uh, they also test for uh, Z141, which he was undetermined for, uh, but uh, the three major groups under Z141, he was also negative for. So, you know, that was quite interesting. interesting. Um, the, you know, because if he's Z140, then he's very likely Z141. And if he's Z141, then he's very likely one of those three branches. And he's not any of those three branches. And like I said, Z141 was listed as undetermined. So, um, now that, uh, all that stuff that I did turned out to be for naught because, uh, a, you know, a little while ago, like a month or two, like two months ago, uh, 23andMe actually did an update and they started to read more SNPs that they tested for and basically, um, narrowed down, uh, uh their customers, uh, haplogroups. So my dad's, 
official haplogroup listing on uh, 23andMe was updated to reflect Z140. So th that's what it says now. And uh, we also joined the Z140 uh, YDNA project over at FamilyTree.com. And I've been part of the Facebook group for this as well. Um, it's run by a man named William Hartley. And, uh, and a man named Simon has been really helpful in uh, helping me determine a lot of this YDNA stuff. Um, of which I'm, you know, still very much a beginner. So... Um, so there, this was kind of exciting. So there was now a new branch of Z140. Uh, before now, uh, only one person who tested positive for Z140 tested negative for Z141, which means uh, before that person, everyone else who had tested positive for Z140 also tested positive for Z141. So it was sort of a given that if you were Z140, you were probably Z141. Um, now, a second person tested for a new SNP uh, called uh, IA16598. <laughs> I try to remember that. <laughs> this actually made me uh, pretty excited because I know that my dad is positive for Z141 and he's negative for the three big branches under Z141. And there are other branches, as you can see. Um, he, my dad is negative for these down here. He's um, A196, uh, F2642, and uh, Z2535. He tested negative for all those. These ones are much smaller. Um, they are not large branches, uh, but they are there and very positive, possible that he could be positive for any of those. Um, so when this new person uh, he tested positive for this, and they don't add this new SNP to the tree until more than one person has tested positive for it. Uh, more than one unrelated per people. Um, so, uh, now that a second person has tested positive for this SNP, they've added a new branch under Z141. And this made me excited because, you know, like I said, my dad's undetermined for this and he was negative for all of these. So I thought it might be possible if he, it might be possible that he's uh, under this branch. And the, the people that were under this branch were Swedish, whereas most of the... Uh, um, ethnicity of the people under these branches tended to be uh, British Isles or we Western Europe in general um, not so much in the Northern Europe area like Northern um, well British Isles is in nor Northern Europe but I mean in Scandinavia so th this was the big one that was in Scandinavia and it, there's sprinkled some in here and there but yeah so um I was thinking, okay, it's possible my dad could be positive, positive for this. So the SNP test became available on YSeq, um, and I sent my dad a SNP test for that. Now, um, the risk of doing this was that um, it could, because the SNP test, a single SNP test was only $18. The other option was to, um, was to get the whole panel test for Z141. And uh, that is $88. And uh, I was going to do that test if I needed to. Um, but uh, since this happened and this is only $18, I figured I could take a risk. And, uh, you know, because if he's positive for this, then it saves us a lot because I don't have to buy the Z141 uh, panel test. Um, but, you know, if he's negative, it could potentially cost more because I, you know, he's negative for that $18 test and now I'm still going to buy the $88 one, so potentially that could cost us more. Um, but it was a risk and yeah, so that's what I did. So any results are good results from this. Uh, I wasn't really expecting positive or negative, um, just results really. You know, um, sure, it would have been nice if he was positive because then I wouldn't have to pay for uh, any future tests other than the Y12 test from Family Tree DNA. Um, but if, you know, but, you know, if he's negative, then 
you know, that, that's results too. And that really helps us narrow down things as well because it, then it's extremely likely that he is actually positive for Z141 and probably one of those smaller branches. So his results came in and so he's positive for Z141 and negative for the A16598 SNP. And like I said, any results are good results. Um, that was good to see because now we have some clarity. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go ahead and buy the uh, Z140 panel test. Um, maybe, I don't know. Uh, it's possible I might um, save up and maybe someday get the uh, big Y test for him. I don't know. Um, I don't know how important it is for me specifically to find out his exact haplogroup, group, you know? But I have, you know, all of this stuff has really sparked an interest in genetic genealogy, so um, I may end up doing that anyway someday, um, just so that we have that there and it helps the project etc. But those big Y tests are extremely expensive. So I don't know. But what is next up is the Y12 test from Family Tree DNA my dad for Christmas. And what will the Y12 test will help us with? Well, one, it gets um, my dad in uh, Family Tree DNA's uh, system. And that's good because we are part of that uh, um, Y haplogroup uh, DNA study, um, the Y DNA uh, project. <laughs> um, and so, you know, doing, most people go for a minimum of the Y37 test. And what those are, they are STR tests, um, short tandem repeat, I believe is what that stands for. And um, basically it's, uh, it's not exact, it's not going to give us Y haplogroups, really. It's just going to test for markers, uh, for uh, common markers with uh, deep ancestry. And uh, these are the tests that are more closely related to the surname studies. And uh, that is one of the big things we're doing all this for, is to find out what our surname was supposed to be. So the Y12 test is the lowest possible one they test for, which means my dad will get a lot of matches for this. And most of them are probably not going to be uh, relevant. They, they're matches, but they probably match like so far away that their common ancestor is probably like, you know, 20, 30 generations pa uh, back. So there's really not, that's not helpful. But what I do hope is that uh, when we find a likely uh, surname, which, spoiler alert, we have, <laughs> um, that's going to be in about two videos from now. But uh, in uh, when we have that surname and uh, we have this, we might be able to connect with that surname with other people who tested. Uh, and they wouldn't be close relatives. They would be very distant relatives. They just happen to have that same line. So that's what we're hoping for. Um, yeah, so um, now this is a little bit diff different than what I was talking about before. And this is going to be a little confusing. <laughs> um, uh, so I was able to upload a lot of our, uh, our DNA to uh, Family Tree DNA and to the classical GEDmatch instead of GEDmatch uh, um, Genesis. And we, I wasn't able to do that before because, um, because we tested with the V5 chip from 23andMe, and which is a more advanced chip than what was out there before. However, most uh, other sites have not upgraded their systems to accept the V5 chip. So, um, and that includes family tree DNA, uh, so we couldn't upload our um, autosomal DNA to them, and I had to use GEDmatch Genesis instead of regular GEDmatch um, because it wouldn't accept the V5 chip uh, either. However, I've been able to find out how to convert uh, the V5 uh, chip to a V3 
Now, that does result in some loss of information. So, um, it's, I wouldn't say it's a risk or anything. It's just, and, you know, always have a backup copy of your original uh, DNA file and then uh, have a, uh, the current, the V5 version of it, the conversion version. The conversion version. <laughs> um, so... What I did, um, and I will uh, leave some links down below to uh, some sites that I found this from. So you have to upload your DNA to a site called DNA.land. Now, once it's fully up uploaded, which may take a few days, um, and I would have had a visual of this because I just had my grandmother tested, uh, um, my maternal grandmother tested, and I have access to her account, so uh, I was going to, I am trying to convert hers to uh, the V3 chip so that I can upload it on Family Tree Maker, or Family Tree DNA and GenMatch, but I'm having some sort of issue with hers right now, and it's not uploading completely. Um, all of the other ones I've done uploaded just fine, and it took about a day, maybe two, for it to be fully uploaded, and uh, all these things work perfectly. But for some reason, my grandmother's won't uh, upload properly. Uh, the other ones took only a few days, like a day or two, and everything worked fine. Um, so anyway, uh, if your thing, uh, if your uh, DNA uploads correctly and fine, um, then uh, you have to uh, click the imputed VCF and re-download it. And so that is a, it basically DNA land is uh, converting your file to another file um, that has different information on it. So you will have to then uh, re-download the uh, new version. Now, uh, once uh, after that, you download and install the DNA Kit Studio program, which I will leave a link to down below, um, and run the program. Now, in this program, in the VCF to RAW converter, uh, select the VCF file you downloaded from uh, DNA Land. Now, rename the output file to this whole thing. You can see it on the screen, genome underscore, and you can change XX and YY to anything you want. Um, preferably, you would use the name of the individual. Um, so, genome underscore XX underscore YY underscore V3 underscore full underscore 2018 dot text. Now, um... So select the raw data template uh, to template underscore 23andMe underscore v3 dot text and uh, then click convert and uh, it'll take about 5 to 15 minutes and once it's done uh, you zip the file and upload it to MyHeritage or Family Tree uh, or not my heritage. I don't know why I have that in there. It's a uh, family tree DNA because my heritage actually takes uh, the V5 chip. And now uh, my heritage recently started charging for um, uploads. I mean, you can upload it for free, but if you want to see any of the results or any of your matches, they do uh, charge a fee now. But if you were able to get it uploaded before December 1st, 2018, then you are grandfathered in and you have access to all of the um, matches and the other information. So um, after that's done, you can now upload to GenMatch and Family Tree DNA. But like I said, when you're doing this conversion, some information is lost and there are some issues. Um, so with GenMatch, it takes about five to 24 hours uh, after you upload it to see results. And Family Tree DNA, when it works, <laughs> which I'll get to in a minute, it's actually very fast. It, it was like within an hour so uh, of the ones that I uploaded that worked. Now, um, on with Family Tree DNA, uh, mine and my husband's worked. Uh, ours uploaded just fine, and we can see our matches and all that. However, my dad's, my mom's, and my grandpa's are still pending weeks later. Like they uploaded, uh, but I can't see any of their matches, and they don't they don't show up as my matches. And I've tried to contact customer service. 
they are having some issues with 23andMe uploads um, and that they'll get back to me when they have more information. And that's been, you know, weeks. So I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know if we'll ever be able to get the results from that. Uh, I don't know, honestly. Now, um, so both of the sites have some issues with the with reading the xDNA uh, from this file. Um, on GEDmatch, the issue uh, with the xDNA, we have, we all have zero X matches, which seems extremely unlikely. I mean, we should have at least some X matches, and uh, those are people who match with us on the X chromosome. And unfortunately, we don't have any X, X matches on that are being shown on uh, GenMatch. So uh, I can't use XDNA. And this the opposite is true for our files on Family Tree DNA, um, at least for my mine and my husband's. Every single match is an X match, <laughs> which doesn't make any sense and is just as unlikely. So, um, yeah, so there are some issues with the X chromosome, I believe, when you're converting it from V5 to V3, and both sites that we've uploaded that converted version to have had issues on the X chromosome. So, um, so that's the risk, but, you know, I, I'm, I don't regret doing it because otherwise I wouldn't have those tests on GenMatch or Family Tree DNA. And other than that, and the issue that Family Tree DNA is having with some of the 23andMe tests, um, we've got no problem here. Um, now, my I did recently recently get access to my uncle's ancestry test, and um, that uploaded totally fine to Family Tree DNA. And uh, so I've kind of been using his results from Family Tree DNA as a stand-in for my dad's because he is his brother. Um, because my dad's, I can't see any of his matches. So I'm using my uncle's uh, DNA on Family Tree DNA to see my our, our shared matches. All right, and um, using it on GenMatch, though, has opened up so many doors. Um, so the best tool so far uh, has been the GenCom to DNA kit tool, um, which I'll get more into detail in in the next video. Uh, but uh, basically, that has really helped because uh, we didn't have that uh, option available in GenMatch Genesis. And um, I've also been really using the... Uh, people who match to uh, kit numbers uh, tool, which has been extremely helpful as well. So definitely worth it, but it does have issues. So um, that is the end of this video. Um, like I said, there's not a whole lot that was in this video, um, but like I said, uh, we actually have just gotten a lot of developments lately, and uh, I believe I might have, this might be ending in part nine, because <laughs> I'm going to have a part eight video where I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, some big, uh, you know, the matches and new theories, and uh, yeah, and then part nine is probably the last one. I'm not sure, uh, but, um, well, it'll, it'll be close because we, we haven't found the right person, but I, spoiler alert, we found the right family. So, so yeah, I'm very excited. And anyway, thanks for watching guys. I will see you, um, next time and, uh, Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Bye everyone.